I'll start by thanking the a cappella choir for introducing today's proceedings in, in, in the way they always do, in this beautiful way. The, the a cappella is a, is a student choir that's completely student-led. There's no staff input, and all we have to do is say, would you like to sing at an event? And they turn up, and they always do a wonderful job. So thank you very much to the a cappella choir. Thank you. Can I welcome you all here today in this lovely weather in Wales? Um, I'm sure it'll get better. It's forecast to be, the sun is forecast to be shining at five o'clock, so let's hope it is. Um, can I welcome second years who are about to become UWC alumni, first years, parents, donors, friends, staff, all of you today to the um, uh, Atlantic College Leaver Ceremony. And my first main job is to introduce our guest speaker. Uh, this year our guest speaker is Cilia Valestad. Cilia 
graduated from Atlantic College in 1997, after which she went on to start a number of idealistic projects and startups around the world. Celia was recognised as Norwegian Female Entrepreneur of the Year in 2011 and is a European Ambassador for Female Entrepreneurship. She has also been named on the top 20 business thinkers in the Nordics. In 2013, Celia was named a Young Global Leader by the World Economic Forum. This role she shares with people such as Mark Zuckerberg, Crown Prince Hakon of, of Norway, Marissa Mayer of Yahoo, Chelsea Clinton, Emil Clooney, and around a thousand other young leaders in all areas globally. As the World Economic Forum puts it, a young global leader is a bold, brave, and action oriented entrepreneurial leader who decides to use their leadership talents to make the world a better place. Celia has a number of times stated clearly that her journey started here at AC. So can I introduce Celia to you now as our guest speaker. Thank you so much for those kind words. Um, it's emotional being back here. It's been 19 years. But this day is about the class of 2016. Congratulations, everyone. You made it. Um, I'm sure it's been a few weeks of blood, sweat and tears and long nights and a lot of coffee. And a long night this last night as well, I assume, for some of you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, honour guests, faculty, staff, families. We didn't have families back in my days coming to see us off. And first years, now second years. I'm truly, truly honoured to be here today. But I must also admit to tell you one truth, that just a few days ago I was wondering how on earth I could get out of doing this talk. It wasn't that I didn't want to come back here to this amazing place, the place that I called home for two very, very important years of my life. This mini global bubble that embraces everything I love, the UWC spirit of hope, inclusion, passion, friendships and dreams the castle and the grounds that just take your breath away when you first arrive here and did so again when I walked through the main gates yesterday. Do you guys remember the first time you came here? When you came through the main gates? And how you were like for weeks, even months perhaps, pinch yourselves as you were exploring the grounds in the castle. And then after a while, it just seemed natural to live in a castle, completely normal to walk around these grounds. Uh, it seemed normal to walk here. It seemed normal to kiss in the Romeo and Juliet hut <laughs> and to swim in the pool in my days. So it doesn't seem like as much swimmable anymore. It seems that it needs renovation. Um, to drink coffee in the beast garden, to eat lunch in the dining hall, to sneak out on the rooftops and drink wine. <laughs> um, yet a few days ago, I was nonetheless trying to find a way out of, of coming here and doing this talk because I was scared. I was feeling, I was worried that I wasn't the right person to come here and do this talk. That I haven't done enough, that I hadn't succeeded enough, that I didn't have enough wisdom to share here today. I've done a lot of things. A number of them were mentioned in the introduction here. Um, I'm accompanied by a lot of amazing people in my role with the World Economic Forum and other roles I have. But I've also failed a number of times. And the first thing I want to talk to you about today is failure. One day in December of 2014, it was late in California, I was living in California back then. In Norway, it was early morning and a friend called me and said, Celia, prepare for a storm tomorrow. You're on the cover of the Financial Times. A few years earlier, I started a technology company that was developing mobile-based safety technologies. Be safe was the most used personal safety application in the world. We received emails daily from users everywhere, a lot of them in developing countries where it was really, really important with this service, uh, of how much BSEP meant to them, how we help them every day. We knew that we had saved a number of lives. We knew that we had stopped rapes. We knew that we were helping a million people stay better connected and stay safer every day. 
We had great reviews, great press, a lot of the time, not this one. Um, and we even have had a celebrity investor involved, the, the Will Smith family. But we hadn't managed to make money. We were failing financially. We didn't manage to monetize the service, much like most of the apps out there. I mean, how many of the apps you have on your phones are you paying for? It's hard to make money on apps. I knew the trouble we were in very, very well. We had worked extremely hard. The last year before this, this event was, was rough. I'd even stepped down as CEO, appointing a corporate guy with a big track record, the, big, the biggest mistake in my life, to, to take my, my, my position. But I wasn't prepared for this storm coming that morning. Um, and I was worried. So I purchased a PDF copy of the paper, and there was a big picture of me smiling on the cover of the paper with a massive, nice title saying, flopping. It was surreal. I was shaking. My hands were sweating. I was crying. It felt awful, and it felt like a complete, complete failure. And it got even worse when my board member called me and said, Celia, if you don't turn this ship around and turn this into success, um, you're done in business and done as an uh, you're done in business and dead as an entrepreneur. The lives we had saved, the service we had built, pouring our hearts into everything we'd done, meant nothing at that point. It just felt dark. At that point, I was lucky to live in Silicon Valley, not Norway, to tell you the truth. The place where failures are celebrated and the can-do attitude is strong. I was extremely lucky to be part of the UWC community of people who believe that things can be done, and the YGL community. And in the YGL community, we use an app called Telegram, which is interesting for you as well. Um, and I poured out my heart and said, listen, things are rough. Failing is hard. Failing is rough. And one of the entrepreneurs, or sorry, one of the investors, a well-known person, said that, Celia, I never invest in entrepreneurs who haven't failed at least once. I'm stating this to, the, to you as a hope that many of you will move into business and will become entrepreneurs and start your own ventures. And the reason she said that was simple, it was three reasons. The lessons you learn from failure are far more important than the lessons you learn from success. An entrepreneur who has failed, yet still gets back on the horse, shows some sort of a passion, a willingness to do stuff, is a person you can believe in to take things forward. And directly from her mouth, I don't want to work with assholes. When you have failed, you have a humbleness with you uh, that carries on to your next projects. So class of 2016, failing hurts, but don't be afraid to fail. Don't let the fear of failure stop you. You will never succeed if you're not willing to risk failing. Failing is an important part of life in all areas. Can you name a world-class athlete that won his first race. It's part of trying. You try and you fail, and you try and you fail, and eventually make it. It's like Thomas Edison said when he invented the light bulb. I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. <laughs> there's great value in failure because there is great learning in failure. Remember that, and also remember that there is a huge difference between failing and being a failure, even though your mind might mix up the two at times. I lived in Silicon Valley for three years. The melting pot of innovation, of technology companies, the can-do place in the world where everyone believes that everything is possible. In a small town called Palo Alto, the home of Stanford University, some of you might be going there, uh, the home of Facebook, the home of Google, the home of many of the, the tech companies you know of, and many of the tech companies you will know of. It's an amazing place. But it's also a place that struggles with teen suicides. A number of teenagers every, every year kill themselves because they feel like failures, or they're worried that they won't succeed. My kids were six, nine, and 12 years old when we moved to Palo Alto. And while I saw the pressure of this place, an amazing place, but still a very high pressure society, I didn't think my kids saw it until one afternoon with a very specific episode. 
I was every Thursday I would pick up my, my young son, my youngest one from, from class and, and from school and walk him to his acting class. And we walk and talk and eat ice cream and talk some more. And this my youngest one, he's a philosopher, he's a thinker, he reads a lot, he studies a lot, he's a very intellectual mind and reads about everything. And as we were walking there and he was rambling on about dinosaurs and space exploring and this town in Alaska that fascinates him because everything is connected underground and all sorts of other things. I told him, Alvin, promise me that you will always stay this curious. And Alvin went completely silent, which isn't normal for this boy, <laughs> until he said, but mom, the most important thing in life is to get into good college. He was eight. And yes, college is important. And you guys are well on your way, having graduated from one of the best high schools in the world. But, and I can't state this clearly enough, college is not the most important thing in life. It's not the most important thing in life. Even if your IB scores, like mine, weren't what you expect them to be or will not be what you expect them to be, it's not the most important thing in life. You'll do fine. So what is the most important thing in life? Yes. <laughs> So what is the most important thing in life? When I was 20, I had the chance to ask Dalai Lama this question. I was together with a friend from AC. I was organizing a three-day conference in Queen Elizabeth Hall in, in London. And the Dalai Lama invited me and Jonathan to visit him at his house in Dharamsala in India. So we went there and we spent a full hour with him, talking to him, interviewing him, asking, asking him all sorts of questions. And the final question we asked was, what is the most important thing in life? And the Dalai Lama just started laughing. And he was clapping in his hands and laughing and smiling from ear to ear until he said, the most important thing in life is to be happy. But don't ask me how. <laughs> but I ask you, all of you, and especially your students, to ask yourselves how you can be happy. Don't settle for less than happiness ever in your lives. Life is too short. And if you search deep inside yourselves, I think your heart will guide you to the right place. You might have expectations for yourself that are in conflict with what your heart is telling you to do. And you might feel expectations from people around you, parents, teachers, sponsors, siblings. But don't waste time living someone else's life. Find your way. 19 years ago, I was sitting where, you were, where you're sitting now. We didn't have this family big gathering that you have now, but we had our own Libra's dinner. And I had a rush of emotions. <coughs> Joy for being done with my exams. Love for the people and the place. Excitement about my next steps. Sorrow for leaving. And fear for the unknown. It can be scary to graduate. I'm sure that a lot of you feel that right now. It's scary to leave this place. I couldn't believe that two years had passed so quickly and that it was time to move on. And I didn't really know where I was going. I had a place waiting for me at London School of Economics, but it didn't feel right. During my years here, a classmate and I had continuously organized a lot of projects. And Anita Roddick, the founder of Body Shop, I know an award and her name is given out afterwards. And the head of Amnesty International in the UK had continuously been supporting me and Jonathan in, in these ventures. And they asked us, what can you do to bring the UWC spirit to the world? And how can you share what you've learned here? And we all know the words of Kurt Hahn. How can there be peace if people don't understand each other? And how can they understand each other if they don't know each other? So Jonathan and I set out to share the UWC with the world, and we founded an NGO called World Voices. So over the next couple of years, we spent day and, out, day and night developing two projects, a three-day conference in Queen Elizabeth Hall in London, and a book written by young people from all over the world and world leaders together. Um, a lot of people thought we were completely crazy doing this, including my parents, who thought I'd gone nuts. So how could two people, 19 at the time, book one of the biggest venues in the UK and the most expensive venues in the UK for three days with expectations of bringing in Nobel laureates together with the grassroots activists from around the world. 
And how could we even think about in the days without internet? There was some sort of internet. We had one computer at this school back in 97, one computer with one email address that we all shared. Okay? <laughs> So how could we think about collecting all these writings and the stories from young people from all over the world? No, we didn't really think about that. We didn't pause to think, and we didn't think we couldn't do. And looking back, in many ways, it seems completely crazy. I think if I had waited for a few years to do this, to aim for like what everyone else thought was impossible, I think I probably would have thought it was impossible myself, and I would have stopped myself doing it because I've been taught in a different way or gone the normal path. But I came right from AC, where you think that everything is possible and the world is your playground. And you think that you can do anything and you can save the world. And it is possible. It is possible to change things. It's not easy. It's not fast. You may fail. I failed many times, not just this one time I told you about. It's not fast and you can't do it alone. But it's definitely possible. And now, class of 2016, you're joining a family of graduates from the UWC movement. Many of them are also um, members of the World Economic Forum and the Young Global Shapers and the Young Global Leaders. You're joining a family of people who believe that change is possible. So reach out to us. Join us in the mission we're on. I want to finish off by a few words of Steve Jobs that you all know. And these words were turned into commercial that always lift me up whenever I'm feeling that I don't fit in. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. But the only thing you can't do is to ignore them because they change things. They push the human right forward. And while some see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. So class of 2016, go out and join the crazy ones. This world, this place has shown you what the world can be like. Now go and change it. Thank you. Thank you, Celia. Celia, for those uh, for those wonderful words. I think it's really important to have uh, an ex-student back to speak to, to the students at this at this at this time of change for them, because they can see they can project forward to see what they might be doing in, in 20, 19 years' time. So thank you very much for your very wise words at, at, at this time. Thank you. Uh, my next job is to is to is to move on to the to the Dame Anita Ruddick Award, and <coughs> which is going to be awarded today. Um, just to remind you who Dame Anita Roddick was, she was a successful British businesswoman and entrepreneur, a human rights activist and environmental campaigner, best known as the founder of The Body Shop, a cosmetics company producing and retailing beauty products that shaped ethical consumerism. <coughs> this prestigious annual award presented Every year recognizes a graduating student who best demonstrates Damonita Roddick's dual beliefs of I'm an activist and take it personally. It is awarded to a student who has shown great initiative and made a, a positive difference in a global setting, whether it is environment, ecology, or human rights, and who has done something to improve a life and or to right a wrong, which makes a significant change for good in the world and this often in a quiet and unassuming way. This person arrived at the college a quiet and observant student. They had the confidence to achieve all they wanted, and they went about it in their own way. This person decided that before they left Atlantic College, they would learn all that you could learn here, and, do, and to do that, to really make the absolute most of everything you need to be organized and determined. This person is all this and more. She's kind, thoughtful, adventurous, and full to the brim of spirit. 
Whilst at the college, she has worked with children and adults in, in ALPS. She has risen early to experience all that the Kurt, the Kurt Hahn experience can offer. And more than all that, she's been the decent and honourable student who has taken all the cups, bowls and other dining hall crockery back from the house. <laughs> her housemates adore her and chose her to represent them on the student council. She's a model of how a quiet and calm person can bring a rowdy house meeting to, or to order with nothing but a stern look. She encapsulates what, is to be, what, is, what it is to come to a UWC and to know that you're going to be a different person when you leave. She was never frightened by that. The way in which she has embraced the whole experience from absorb absorbing the experiences of others to sharing hers is an inspiration. She's going on from here to her home country where she intends to educate villages and compounds on the benefits of waste management. This young woman is, a, is going to do great things and it has been a joy to have her here. The 2000 Dame Anita Roddick Award this year goes to Kirsty Hawke. Thank you, Kirsty. I'd now like to introduce Dave Booker as our Vice Principal uh, Curriculum to, pre to present the Harvard Book Prize. Dave. Thanks, John. Uh, we need to turn to the first years now for a moment. Uh, it's a great pleasure, it really is, to present the Harvard Book Prize. Uh, this year, Harvard have given us uh, Stephen Pinker's The Better Angels of Our Nature a book entirely, I think, suitable to a college of this type with this mission. If I read the citation, I think it will set this particular student up very, very well. <laughs> the book is awarded to an outstanding student in the penultimate year, academically excellent with exceptional personal qualities, who makes a significant contribution to school or community. Uh, by the way, I hope they're here. <laughs> um, this certain, certainly is an outstanding student. I asked their tutor and house parent to write some things about them, and they were both so excited that this student had won, because they truly deserve this prize. They are outstanding. Um, the student is getting nearly 45 points, and is predicted 45. That puts them, to put it into context, in about the 0.2% of students worldwide in the IB. That's a phenomenal achievement. But that, as I think everybody on this uh, platform has said, is not the half of it. Um, this student is fun-loving, optimistic, and vibrant, full of positive energy in the house, and total dedication to everything that they commit themselves to. But this is the key. This word sticks out. Compassion, which is a very, very Kurt Hahn idea. We heard Celia earlier talk about another Curtin idea, failure, that everybody should be given the opportunity to fail. But his other great concept was compassion, and this person is truly compassionate. And in that way, they epitomize the ideal of what a UWC student should be. So it's great pleasure to award the 2016 Harvard Book Prize to Masha. <laughs> Dave. <clears throat> I'd, like, I'd like now to introduce Daniel Reed, who's going to sing River by Leon Bridges. Thank you. 
All right, this is River. Been traveling these wide roads for so long. My heart's been gone from you. Ten thousand miles gone. Oh, I wanna come here and give you every part of me But there's blood on my hands And my lips are unclean In my darkness I remember Mama's words reoccur to me Surrender to the good Lord And He'll wash your slate clean And take me to your river I Take me to your river I wanna know Dip me in your smooth waters I'll go in As a man with many crimes Come up for air And as my sins roll down the Jordan Oh, I wanna come here And give you every part of me there's blood on my hands And my lips are unclean Take me to your river I wanna know Oh Lord, oh please let me know Take me to your river I wanna go Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, I'd now like to introduce, uh, the great pleasure to introduce our first year speaker, Lara Nash. Lara? Alrighty. Good afternoon, students, staff, and guests. My name is Lara Nash. Get ready to have a bash. So, I have three messages I'd like to give you second years today on behalf of all your first years. Firstly, congratulations. You've managed to make it through not only the intense insanity that is the IB, but also two years in the dangers of Atlantic College. And that is a miraculous and quite frankly inspirational achievement in itself. Because AC is rarely a safe place to be. It's filled with winds, windows that could break, adventures health and safety wouldn't quite agree with, <laughs> numerous castle ghosts, hundreds of places to get lost, and most terrifyingly, people you can no longer imagine not seeing in the canteen three times a day. It's the kind of place where sometimes, often even, 
staying up until three in the morning discussing conflicts in the Middle East or our purpose in life or whether or not a penguin with super speed would beat Clifford the Big Red Dog in a fight. <laughs> it seems like a better decision than getting a decent night's sleep. We were all thrown into this crazy place in the middle of nowhere with nothing but fields full of sheep and a group of 350 odd students from all around the world with no clue what we're doing. But you second years, you've made it. And if it weren't for the truly amazing second years we've had, I'm sure many of us first years would have turned our backs and fled in fear. But you guys were here to welcome us. You gave us the confidence to be here and express ourselves to stand up in rooms full of people and no longer be terrified of looking like an absolute fool. To find out who we truly are and be proud of it. Which brings me to my second point. Each and every one of you deserves a million thanks and then probably like 343 more thanks for helping and guiding and taking us first years with you on every one of the crazy adventures we've shared and all the beautiful memories that we've made. You taught us it's okay to be afraid of it all sometimes and that if we get knocked down, we can stand back up again. You taught us how to challenge the system despite the danger of upsetting people. You taught us how to get to history and which desserts in the canteen are best what to do on the weekends, and how to win at wrestling. You taught us everything we needed to know, everything we wanted to know, and so much more. And though we didn't always take your advice, and I still haven't been to Zumba despite literally everyone telling me to do so since my first <laughs> night here, it still warmed my heart throughout the cold Welsh winter that you guys have been here for us when we needed support, or laughter, or love, or simply recommendations for a high-intensity dance workout activity. <laughs> Most importantly, you taught us to embrace every moment we have here, whether it be wonderful or awful, because they all come together to make up our AC experience. Seeing you guys struggle through IAs, the EE, and third term, but still having a blast at Soch or Open House or whatever it was that you personally found solace in, it showed us that the bad stuff is necessary to truly enjoy the good times, which there will always be plenty of here in our little castle by the sea. Finally, I know I speak on behalf of us all when I say, I love you. Our whole year loves you so much and it can't truly be expressed in a five-minute speech because this is a whole year of love. And not even just that, because this year has gone by in the blink of an eye and still feels like an eternity. An infinite collection of moments, the vast majority of which special in their incredible normality. I guess the only way I have of explaining it to you all is that a year ago, we didn't know you, and you were yet to have any significance in our lives. But now, after a year of spending every waking moment together, surrounded by each other, I think of you guys every night whilst my roommates snore softly in their own corners. And each morning, I wake up and I smile at the thought of you and your wonderful, beautiful souls. So, beloved second years, from all your firsties, we love you, are so incredibly grateful for everything you've done for us, and are inexplicably proud of you and your achievements this year and for the rest of your lives. Thank you. Thank you, Lara, for those words. Thank you very much. 
I'm, I'm now going to introduce Nick Lush, who's our uh, Vice Principal Pastoral, who is going to, he's going to take us through the Leavers Acknowledgement. Nick. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, a number of years ago, um, there was a girl to whom I taught um, both uh, chemistry and environmental systems. She was also um, um, one of my extended essay supervisors, and I was in the same uh, community service as her. As you can imagine, our paths crossed pretty much all the time, and um, I got to know her really, really very well. Um, on leaving Atlantic College, um, she was probably one of the students that I was most proud to have taught. She got 24 points. Um, the reason why she was probably one of the most... The reason why she was the student that I was most proud of to have taught was that the starting point for her was that she, she uh, came from a background where she hadn't had as much education as everybody else, uh, or, or as many other students had had. She had had a disrupted education, and English was her third language. Apart from that, when she came, she came as a non-swimmer, yet she joined what uh, in the old days was called the Extramural Center Service, which we would now call um, Atlantic Outdoors. And she, uh, by the end of her time here, actually was teaching children to swim. In addition to that, when she started, she was painfully shy. She had difficulty communicating with people, but by the time she left, she was a gentle, quietly confident young woman. Her, her change over a period of two years was huge. In many ways, um, her education at Atlantic College could be called a transformative education. And that's not uncommon. I guess, actually, that happens to most of you. The last two years really have been transformative. For many of you, when you came here, you were probably shocked at how difficult some of your lessons were. Many, many students say to us, oh my goodness, the teachers here are rubbish. You know, when in my last school, I was so good. And everybody else was, you know, less, than, less good than I was. That's a very typical comment. Other students, when they've come here, have suddenly discovered qualities and abilities they didn't even know that they had. You've all had to learn to cope with relentless workloads passed on to you by the IB. You've had to learn to live with others, and you've had to learn to be independent. In a way, you all deserve to be acknowledged for the journeys you've made over the last two years here. So, how on earth do we make that acknowledgement? How do we say wonderful things to each and every one of you? Well, what I'd like to do now is to ask you, second years, to think about the journey you've made since you came to the college. Think of your achievements, and as Celia said, maybe think of some of your failures. I would also like you to think of your friends and their achievements, and maybe their failures too. So what I'm gonna do in a minute is I'm gonna call every house to stand up, every second year, uh, all the second years in each house to stand up, and let's give them a round of applause. And while we're giving them a round of applause, let's think about the successes, if you're in that house, that you've made, and the successes your friends have made. I'm gonna start off with PK, and while I mention PK, um, it's, uh, it's sad that Carol can't be here today, and I know that all of our thoughts are, are with her. So, second years from PK, please stand. Morganuk, second years, please stand. <laughs> and Powis.
Gwyneth. Whitaker. Tice. Suddenly. And finally, I should remind you that actually we have eight houses at the college. Um, Madiba House isn't with us today. They're actually doing their last piece of their co-curricular work. They're actually uh, on an expedition. <laughs> Not great weather for that, but there we are. Um, they are a small group of students who all leave to go to breakfast before half past seven in the morning. I don't know whether you knew that, but it's true. They are a group of students who've never appeared on the night report. They have, they have a massive workload, and they're all a group of young students who've actually been great role models to you, I think. So, in their absence, please do give them a nice warm round of applause. Thank you, Nick. We now have uh, uh, some more music, so I'd like to introduce Emily Nichols and Colton Bishop, who are singing Way Back When by Codling. So he 
I hope that I can say when all my days are done that I had my fun. Thank you very much, Emily and Colton. Thank you very much. Hi, and Carson, of course, as well on guitar. Yes. I'd, now, I'd like to introduce our second year's speakers now who are going to respond to our first year speaker. And the second year speakers this, this year are Sanai Kiunsi and Tomas Yautzikowski. <laughs> Hello, hello. Cheerio. From the shores of East Africa comes the Tanzanian, excited to find this new land, see what it will feel like, what it will look like. But she's especially excited for the mesmerizing skyscrapers. But even though that it's going to be an interesting experience that she doesn't know what will happen, she's super duper excited for the UWC AC experience to start. The party began at Heathrow when she first met her co-years starting with the American with the funny name ending with ooh. <laughs> then the Vietnamese who would soon be their DJ, the Malaysian with pepper sweets, not to mention the diva from Bombay with the, sweet, with the ceaseless smile, and of course, all the other bright souls ready to begin their last leg of the journey to their new habitat. She was full of excitement to leave the airport and see them skyscrapers along the way to her new home. But no, all she saw were houses, trees, and sheep. Lots of them. The more they drove, the more sheep she saw. That is when she realized that the big girl town she was going to wasn't London, but Lantwit Major. I, on the other hand, did not expect to see skyscrapers on the way to Lantwit. Well, that's because we've been here before. Could have at least Googled it, Sanai. <laughs> Sorry, slow Wi-Fi situation. I guess we all understand that now. Didn't say that. <laughs> Regardless of where we came from, and no matter what our expectations were, we all found ourselves here at our castle by the sea. We were looking forward to, people, to telling people our names and nationalities, which it turns out they won't even hear. And if they do, then they will forget shortly until they receive a Facebook friend request or a mass email looking for a lost jacket. <laughs> We were greeted by pots and pans and enchanting chants, and um, our adventure started when we went to camp. Surprisingly, the freezing oceans allowed for our warm and loving friendships to begin, and from there on, our journey had begun. We chose our IB subjects, dropped from HL Maths two weeks later, <laughs> and, I and I still remember during the early months, our second years would tell us, let's go to the seafront, it's 16 degrees outside. And I wondered, is this for real? <laughs> or is it part of the induction to British humor? Which of the two? <laughs> during, during AC, some stereotypes have been broken, and others have most definitely been strengthened. Controversies sometimes remained controversies, despite our shared mission. Like the time when we had non-vegetarian panelists for the sustainability conference could be very controversial. However, our disagreements aided our understanding of the varied thoughts we have on global and local issues. Our late night, our late night discussions in the houses turned out to be just as thought-provoking as what happens in the classroom, even if it meant neglecting that I aid you in two days, because of course the IB can wait a minute, and we have coffee mate anyways. A vital part of the reason for this experience being so amazing is because of our incredible first years. We'd like to take this moment to give you guys the biggest of thank yous for all you've done and making this, ye these, this year so memorable. When you first came, you were like little caterpillars, stuck inside your cocoons, just waiting to come out as bright butterflies, flourishing with ideas, ready to make AC a dynamic place, full of different talents and initiatives. Thanks for having our backs during our third term meltdowns and other hard times. 
You guys have been our better halves and brilliant partners in crime. Thank you for the past year of memories and friendships that have been formed. Maybe many of you will not finish your work over summer, but please do the honor of proving us wrong. And if not, li long live the procrastination legacy. <laughs> A big shout out to all the staff at the College Bank and, po and Post Office who helped us endeavor in our commercialist behavior from Amazon to Tesco deliveries. <laughs> Thanks to the development and admission offices as well as university guidance teams for all their help during, during and before our two years here. A massive thank you to all the domestic and health center staff for being there for us at all times. The IT, maintenance and can canteen staff, we appreciate all your efforts. And of course, cheers to our brilliant academic staff who've helped us conquer the IB with their expertise and advice. And yes, Nick Janvier, education is important, but big biceps are indeed important. <laughs> To all our sponsors and donors, we can never thank you enough for your generosity. We pride ourselves for the diversity that you've, even, that you've made even more possible. Second years, co-years. No combination of words from any of the beautiful languages spoken at AC will ever truly represent the love, friendship, and respect that is shared among us. We feel privileged, and we're sure that you, are, that you do too, that we have had the pleasure and honor of sharing these past two years with you, with you guys. A wise friend of mine once told me the one thing she really wanted to carry through after AC was to always stay true to herself. So let's stay true to ourselves as well and continue being the radical and magnificent people that we are. All of our experiences were indeed different and whether our memories are of late night debates, shower parties, conferences, soch, bondings or just spontaneous happenings, we are all united under the UWC name and will forever have that unbreakable connection of being the AC class of 2016. <laughs> It is for this reason that we, A, appreciate all of you who've been part of these two amazing years. You've, B, believed in the mission and helped us make the most of it, which created the C, community. D is for diversity because, E, education was indeed that force that united people, nations, and cultures for peace and a sustainable future. We, F, figured out our flaws and worked together for the G, good of the community. For all the H, happy times that I initiated friendships that were sources of J, Joy during the hard times of AC. The K, knowledge we shared with each other is what L, liberated our minds, our minds and M, make us better global citizens. We have learned to say N, no to what isn't just, be it issues in the college or in the wider world. We have O, opposed, as we P, proposed, and Q, questioned, thereby taking responsibility, R, for the issues we strongly felt for. We S, stood our ground for what we believed in, which comes under the T, title of being a UWC student. We can all be proud of our V, victory over the IB, as we W, walk towards the end of our journey. And of course, X is for xylophone, because we couldn't think of anything that would work with X. <laughs> y is for YOLO, because it is true, you only live once. And Z, Z is for zebra. Just as the zebra has black and white stripes on the same body, we were but one year group that had ups and downs. Accomplishments and downfalls. Times we were high and times we were low. <laughs> times of bliss and times of distress. <laughs> the times we, re we relished in, ex in AC existence and the times we wanted to get away. We were definitely not perfect, but just like the zebra, we are beautiful. We matter. We were different. Because ladies and gentlemen, we, we lived. lived. Thank you, Thomas and Sanai. Thank you very much. I, I, it's now a pleasure to introduce uh, the chair of our Board of Governors, Prof Professor Jonathan Mitchie, who's also the president of Kellogg College in Oxford and a former student, class of 75. Jonathan Mitchie. Well, uh, follow that. Um, I'm well enough acquainted with the, the concept of anticlimax to try to keep these remarks pretty short. Um, but uh, it is, of course, a fantastic privilege to be allowed to chair the Atlantic College uh, Board of Governors. But I, I do feel emotionally um, much more speaking as a, as a former student of UWC at Atlantic College. Um, I don't know why, but I, but I did the other day look up my entry in Wikipedia. And I was delighted to see it starts off saying, 
Jonathan Mickey started his career at UWC Atlanta College. So I stopped reading there and uh, uh, didn't bother going on to all the uh, errors and mistakes and failures, but uh, although I agreed with every, every word you said. Um, and if anything, I feel even more emotionally bonded to Atlantic College because our elder son uh, came here. Apologies to the faculty here who had to uh, teach him, but I'm delighted to say I just met some parents who are parents of one of his very good friends. I just said, my best friend in the world now is one of the students I met at Atlantic College. Um, and I've really become reinvigorated into, into the um, University of Atlantic College message through our son and, and his tremendous group of friends across the globe who are, are all fantastically progressive global citizens. And if anything, their friendship seems to grow by the, by the month. So it's a genuine honor and, and privilege to be allowed to add my word of congratulations to our graduating students. And indeed, my welcome to everybody here to what is a very special occasion. To our graduating students, I'd say it's special to the academic faculty, some of whom managed to get chairs in the uh, marquee today, who will have taught and advised you during your time here. And they're here to acknowledge your considerable accomplishments. But it's also very special for all the other staff of the college, the administrators, cleaners, gardeners, who work tirelessly, often behind the scenes, to ensure that you get the very best UWC experience. And of course, it's a very special occasion for all your loved ones, mostly at the back of the hall, parents, relatives, family, who have every right to feel very proud of your achievements and even a bit emotional. And in fact, I think now is an ideal opportunity for all our graduating, graduating students to show your appreciation for the help and support from your parents and other loved ones by standing up and giving them a standing ovation. But, but most of all, most of all, today is special for you, our graduating, graduating students. You worked very hard to achieve what you have. And certainly, all of us, everybody connected to Atlantic College is very proud of you, your achievements, and what we're convinced you will go out and continue to achieve um, across, the, across the globe. So we very much hope that you will keep in touch with each other as well as ourselves. Now you know that our principal John Wormsley is retiring at the end of this year. He's done a fantastic job leading Atlantic College over the last four and a half, four and a half years. So I know you'll all want to join me in expressing our gratitude and very best wishes for the future to John Wormsley. I'd also like to add my um, thanks to Jerry Holden, caretaker principal, for having done a fantastic job as caretaker. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> and I'm delighted to say that I've got a piece of breaking news, which I think will be announced on Monday, which is that the principal of UWC Maastricht, Peter Howe, who's done a fantastic job there over the past few years, has agreed to come to lead Atlantic College next March. P Peter was, before he was leader of UWC Maastricht, also did a fantastic job leading UWC Adriatic. So I think things are looking very bright for Atlantic College. As well as the leadership of the college, it's also looking very impressive seeing the new sports hall arising, uh, which will be a sports hall, dance, dance area, cafe, um, which will really rejuvenate, rejuvenate I think, the, the campus and college life for, for future generations of, of students and alumni when you come back uh, for your reunions. So finally, I would just say to our graduating students, well done, congratulations, and good luck. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Um, I should apologise to second-year students because you were at one point told that the sports hall would be ready for, when, for you to use. <laughs> and I'm afraid it hasn't been, but it is now coming. It's growing every day, and you can actually see what it's going to be like. Now you can see the shape of it. So uh, it's here, and it's, it's, it'll be uh, a great asset, I think, for our students. And thank you for, for all involved and to our donors for the, uh, for the um, sports hall. Thank you very much. I'd now like to acknowledge staff who are leaving. Um, every year, obviously, some staff leave and move on to new places. And so uh, the staff I'm going to announce have, have left at different times um, over the year. But the, the first ones I'm going to announce are leaving, have been working right through until today, and they're leaving this weekend. So Alex Bird, is Alex here? Mika Pasanan. <laughs> Rose Bermanje. <laughs> Rebecca Jenkins. <laughs> Tiba Ray. And the other staff I'm, I'm going to mention have, have left uh, over the year uh, since the last Leavers Assembly. And the first, one, the first one is Ruth Pickvance, who left in August, and she was an English teacher here. Um, Rob Archer, who was a senior instructor at Atlantic Outdoors, he left in September. Graham Waddington, member of the support staff. Ruth Waddington, a member of the support staff. Tom Baines, assistant house parent. Nicola Wat Watkins, our facilities manager. Andrew McElhose, who keeps leaving here and then comes back again and, uh, and carries on teaching, an inspirational economics teacher. I think he's about 78. Um, but, uh, but I think the students who've experienced his teaching this year have appreciated it very much. Karen George from the domestic team, Chris Dickens, the director of college operations, and Paul Mott, the bursar. So all those staff have left or are leaving, and our thanks go to them for the work they've done here. Thank you. I would just like to say a few words now for my, my, my final Leavers Assembly, uh, about, a bit about the experience that you've had here. And the Atlantic College experience is an intense one. Students arrive from all corners of the world to a noisy welcome of pans and spoons being clattered, drums being beaten, and improvised instruments being played. Friendship comes quickly, and in those first few heady days, everyone is, no, is open to new experience, immersed in the incredible mix of nationality and culture. The relationships between first and second years are fixed for decades to come at this time. I can guarantee that in 2056, you will still be talking about your first years or your second years at UWC Atlantic College. You share a close community, you study for your IB diploma, you bounce, you bounce about in the Bristol Channel in student-built ribs, or you teach local children in Cowbridge or in Lantwick Major. You organise, you engage, you sing, you dance, you fall in love, you become activists, you plant salad vegetables, you look out over the sea and sometimes you can see England as if you could touch it and sometimes you can't see it at all. You debate in mission periods, you challenge, you are passionate, you dream, you learn all about other people's lives, you learn how different you are to other people, but more importantly, you learn how much you have in common with them. Then the four terms are over, the exams are taken, and it is time to move on to the next phase of your lives. What have you gained from the two years spent in this fantastical Potteresque castle? by the sea, set in this beautiful part of Wales, this land of endless sunshine, daffodils and rugby. I hope that you'll found Atlantic College to be a place that values real education above the narrower outcome of exam results, a place where you can be inspired by your surroundings, 
by your fellow students, by the adults that live and work in this community, by visitors who come in to speak and work with you, by ideas and by the life stories of others. A woman called Janet Galbraith said in 1986 that the two qualities that are most important to young people of today are hope and imagination. Hope to believe that they can change the world they live in and imagination to find ways to do so. I hope you believe that you can change the world, whatever occupation you find yourselves in. I hope that you will keep in contact with each other, particularly if you find yourselves on opposite sides of a conflict or a divide. I hope you will fondly remember the fellowship of this place and the bonds that held you together in good times and when things were more difficult. I know that you understand that it is this diverse, colourful, anarchic and empathetic bunch of students that make AC what it is. First year students, some of you will leave on the buses tonight and some tomorrow morning and you will be emotional at the parting with the second years. I hope you will come back refreshed after a full and exciting summer to, to take on the responsibility of greeting and caring for new first years. Second years, like your forebears, you have certainly made your mark on this place. You are an extraordinary group of young people and you can do anything you want. Go out into the world and change it for the better. You will always be part of the UWC Worldwide community. I look forward to seeing what you make of yourselves. Come back to visit and to reunions. Meet up in Boston, Beijing or Buenos Aires. Help to support scholarships for future UWC Atlantic College students. But above all, live your lives adventurously. Thank you. I'm now going to introduce Hakob, Hakob Pasamian, who is going to sing Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong. Hello. Okay. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white The bright blessed day, the dark sacred night And I think to myself, what a wonderful world The colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky are also on the faces of people going by I see friends shaking hands saying how do you do they're really saying I love you and I hear babies cry I watch them grow They'll learn much more Than I'll ever know And I think to myself What a wonderful world Yes, I think to myself what a wonderful world Oh yeah! Thank you, you Hakob, that was a lovely way to finish the, uh, the leaver ceremony, and I think you'll, you can all, you'll all agree that we have a serious musical talent 
uh, which we've seen throughout the, uh, the ceremony today. So thank you to all our musicians. Um, the weather forecast was wrong. The sun is not shining at 5 o'clock. <laughs> so we are going to uh, go to our wet weather plan. So instead of having a guard of honour outside, um, which will, will in, in involve people getting very wet, we will ask the first years to stand up and applaud the second years. Um, and then what we're going to do next is that we're going to move to uh, buffet suppers. In, uh, students are going to stay in here for their buffet suppers. So it'll, be it'll be brought in for them. Uh, but the, the staff and the parents and guests, if, if they could go to the Brainstoke Hall or the dining room, uh, those, t those two venues. So thank you very much for all coming and at attending today. Um, it's a very important time for our students, and it's good that you um, can share it with them. Uh, it is being re has been recorded, so you'll be able to watch it again uh, on the website. Um, and, and the people who, are not here, who have not been able to be here will also be able to watch it too. So again, thank you for coming. Uh, enjoy the buffet and the safe journey home afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you. So...